So Harley Davidson revealed the Sportster S. And I want to talk about it. <laughs> I would say it's the good, the bad, the ugly, but that's not really how it's going to go. It's more like the good, the bad, and then the even better, or more good. Even gooder? <laughs> However you say it, let's just get into it. <laughs> channel on this fine beautiful blue sky but slightly cloudy day it's kind of warm out but when I'm rolling with the wind at me it's not too bad so Harley Davidson revealed the Sportster S at long last picture specs all that stuff and I have mixed feelings about it so I'll start out with the good stuff first of all much kudos to Harley for putting the Revolution Max motor in the Sportster line. That's a great move. And that bodes very well for Harley Davidson down the road because if they're going to start putting the Rev Max motor in all the Sportsters, then that's awesome. Because the Rev Max motor is, of course, the same motor that's in the Pan America, Harley's new adventure bike. It's fully water cooled, makes lots of power, lots of torque. It's a modern motor. Now, the specs for the Sports RS, it's a little detuned from the Pan America, horsepower wise. Torque wise, it's the same. But the torque curve is more flat and more even on the Sports RS versus the Pan America. So, I'm guessing they did that in order to give it a more aggressive sport riding feel, quicker off the line and stuff. I'm not going to go over the specs for the numbers. This isn't really a review of the Sports Dress. It's more just my feelings and opinions on the Sports Dress. So you can find numbers, specs. Just go to Harley's website. They're all there. Another good thing about the Sports Dress is it comes standard with ABS and traction control. Now, analog brakes is ABS. And traction control is like when the back wheel starts slipping, it cuts power to lessen the slip and get traction again. Lots of other modern motorcycles have this. My goal wing here has ABS traction control. Keep running, girl. <laughs> Good for you. I should be running. Anyway, back on topic. A lot of modern motorcycles come standard with ABS and traction control. Most Harleys don't. Uh, they come now with ABS, but traction control and more advanced rider stuff is extra for Harleys. It's like an extra grand for that kind of stuff normally. But the Sports RS comes with it standard. That's good. That's real good. I'm hoping that kind of mentality trickles down to the rest of Harley Davidson's lineup. So they stop nickel and diming the customers and start just giving them the goods. Make it standard like every other brand. Well, I like most of their brands are doing nowadays. Safety first kind of mentality, that kind of thing. Another good thing about the Sports RS is it comes standard with RDS too, or, or RDRS. Uh, whatever that is, it's Harley's, it's Harley's ride modes and rider aids and that kind of stuff. They sell that optional on other bikes. I don't think it's standard on any, any other Harley though. I'm not sure. It might be standard on the Pan America. I'm not, you know, I think it is actually, but it's standard on the Sports RS. That's also really good. I hope Harley down the road standardizes all those safety features, just puts them on all the bikes. Another good thing about the Sports RS is the display, the gauge. It has a four inch TFT, which is a, a digital gauge more or less. It's round and it displays graphics and all your rider modes and information and that kind of stuff. Very similar to what the Indian does with the, the, the new Indian gauges they're round TFTs, very information laden and 
very easy to read at a glance. So I'm glad to see a TFT style display on the Sportster S too. The Pan America has the same thing, only it's rectangular, it's not round. But it's a good move from Harley, it's a good sign. I'm hoping they start seeing more of those kind of rich information gauges on Harleys. And I know a lot of people like the classic needle gauges and stuff on Harleys. They go more for that kind of thing. I'm of the opinion if you can make a modern gauge look old fashioned, that's better. Like the Indian, you can change the display to show a digital needle gauge more or less. I'm pretty sure the Sports Rest does the same thing. I think that's great. I think all Harley should have something like that. It just makes sense in, 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 in today's modern world. That way you kind of appeal to both the new and the old customers. So all these changes are going to allow Harley to better compete with the likes of Indian. The Indian Scout, the Indian FTR, the Honda Rebel 1100, all those kind of bikes. The Sports Rest is a modern Sportster made to compete against modern bikes. But it's not all good news. Let me get to some of the bad points about the Sports Rest. The things that, yeah, the things I don't like. Number one for me would be going to be the styling. I absolutely do not like the way the Sports Rest looks, the way it's designed. I don't like the high exhaust high up on the side. That's just going to cook legs of the riders and especially the passengers. I don't care for the short fender in the back. That doesn't even cover the wheel at all. I don't care for the seat. It's a flat, skinny little solo seat. I don't know whether the passenger can sit on it or not, but it doesn't look like they can. I think it's mostly a solo bike. Either way, that seat on the sports rest looks very uncomfortable. I just don't like the styling, the overall styling of the Sports Rest at all. I would have preferred they drop the Revolution Max motor into a classic looking Sportster. And I'll get I'll get to that a little later in the video actually, because there is good news on that front. But we're still on the bad point, so more things I don't like about the Sports Rest. Well the price for one. It's gonna sell for fifteen thousand dollars. Which feels a little high to me for what it is. Some of the competitors' bikes are priced about the same, some are a little higher, but most a little lower than that. So for what the Sportster S is, it comes in a bit high. If it had been cheaper, I think it would have sold a lot better. As it is, the price is going to probably be a little prohibitive as far as sales go. One more bad point is the lean angle on the bike. Lean angle on both sides of the Sports Rest is 33 degrees. Which isn't all that great for a performance oriented bike. I really would have preferred it had more lean angle. And part of that problem with that is that the bike's so low to the ground. The ground clearance is also low. It's like, they just, it's almost like Harley didn't know what to make of the Sports Rest design wise. Like they wanted a sport performance bike but they also wanted a cruiser style bike at the same time because of that it feels like a bit mixed with regards to specs and performance I almost like the bike doesn't know what it's supposed to be <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm going here but let's go this way ooh down branch one more thing I don't like about the sports dress are the tires they're big fat tires <laughs> they almost look like animal balloon tires to me <laughs> big bulbous beach bike tires I don't know I, mean, I know the Sportster 48 had big tires but the Sportster S tires look even bigger than the 48s were maybe they aren't maybe they're the same I don't know but they look bigger I don't know what Harley was going for with that large tire design point or look either way I'm not really a fan of it I mean, they gotta be expensive, those big, there's lots of rubber on those tires, so they gotta be expensive. And they gotta be heavy too, so you'd think they would cut back the performance a little bit. Heavier wheels to turn and all that. I don't know. I just think the tires look a bit silly. Another negative is the single front disc brake. I don't know why Harley is so 
reluctant to put dual front discs on their motorcycles, but they really are. I mean, they really seem to go, they really seem to not want to put dual brakes on their bikes. But a performance bike like the Sports Duress should really have dual front discs in this day and age. I don't know what the reason for not doing that is. I was probably saving cost savings, I'm guessing. I can't see another reason to. With all that horsepower and torque and performance, it's definitely a bike geared for, you know, running hot, for racing around, for driving fast. It, it could use dual front brakes. Most of the competitors have dual front brakes. So I don't know why the Sports Rift doesn't. It's a, down, it's a real big downside. It's a negative. And also, another Harley tradition they always do, which I don't know why, they gave the bike forward controls. They designed a sport performance bike in the Sports Duress, and they gave it forward controls. They gave it drag bars, you lean forward on the bike. Well, then they went and gave it forward controls. I don't know why they keep doing that on their bikes. I mean, for a cruiser, yeah. Forward controls make sense sometimes. Style-wise, it looks all right. And again, this is one point where it seems like Harley didn't know what they wanted a Sports Duress to be. Did they want a performance bike? Did they want a cruiser bike? It's kind of both. <laughs> it's a bit of both. Now they offer mid controls as an option. You can pay to change out the forward controls for mid controls. But that costs something like 700 some dollars I think it was, or 650 or something like that. It wasn't a low price point. In my opinion, the Sports Duress should have came standard with mid controls and had the option to be forward controls. That would make a whole lot more sense from what the Sports Duress seems to be designed around. So I don't know. I have mixed feelings of the Sports Duress. On one hand, I love what Harley's done and I'm glad to see him do it. I mean, very promising for the future of Harley put all that tech on the bike to put the Revolution Max in the Sportster frame. And then on the other side, on the other coin, they seem to have designed the bike with a bit of a dartboard design ethos. Like they weren't sure what to make of it. Like they wanted a performance bike, but a cruiser at the same time. And because of that, it kind of does both. And yet neither well. I feel like maybe they should have gone all performance on the Sportster S and save the cruiser attributes for a, a future Sportster variant. Which leads me to the rest of the good. I went through the good points, went through the bad. Now I'm gonna go back to some more good because Harley's official release video for the Sportster S at the very end had a just a glimmer of tidbits of information that was very promising to me personally. If you watch it, Harley's official reveal video for the Sports Dress, right around the 12 and a half minute mark, like 1240 or something like that is where it starts, for only like 10 seconds, they start talking about future Sports variants, future Sports models based off this frame and chassis. And then they show a few pictures. They show, and I'll put them here in the video, they show a, a Sports S variant model with a typical Sports Fender on the back with a Fender that covers the entire back tire. Not that performance thing they have with the Sportster S. And they show a picture of the side of the engine of, of the Rev Max engine in the, in the Sportster S frame, but the exhaust comes down beneath the motor and goes like back to the back of the bike lower, like a typical Sportster bike does. The exhaust on a, on a typical Sportster. So obviously Harley has a more traditional Sportster model in the works because there are photos of it they have pictures and then i also found another picture online of a traditional looking sportster based off the sportster s like a full bike picture i'll put that in the here in the video too so you can see it it was a low def picture so i can't zoom in on it or doesn't have a lot of detail but but clearly harley is going to offer future sportster models they look more like a sportster does Less like the most, less like the Sportster S, and more like a normal sporty, a tr traditional sporty, and that's awesome. That's what I want to see. I want to see Harley mix 
awesome tech with the traditional looking Harleys. Because in my opinion, that's what's going to sell the best for Harley Davidson. They got to start offering bikes that appeal to both new riders and the old riders too. And a modern bike with modern tech and modern motor looking like an older bike, I think that'd be a winning combination for Harley. Now, one other good point about all this, with the Sportster S and the future Sportster pictures they quickly, briefly released, is that it means they're going to start putting the Revolution Max motor in other bikes. It means Harley's thinking with the future in mind. Because what I want to see from Harley, I want to see Harley make a modern, lightweight, sport touring bike. Basically a Harley Davidson Goldwing. A bike like this, but a Harley. With electronic windshield, lightweight, the Rev Max motor in it, covered with tech and ABS, traction control, RDS standard. I'm hoping Harley has something like that in the works. Because that's what I want to see. And I'm hoping it's not years down the road, too. I hope it's coming sooner rather than later. But all this Sportster S talk and the future Sportster talk, it all holds a lot of promise for the possibility of what I want to see out of Harley, the modern sport tour. Something to compete against the Goldwing and the FJR, the BMW, Pan uh, Trans America, whatever they call it. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> the BMW Tory bike. Maybe it's a KT 6000 or something. I don't know. I think that's what it is. So in any case, while the sports dress is not my cup of tea, it is very promising for the future of Harley. And I hope it sells very well for Harley too. I hope it makes them a lot of money. I hope it's a popular bike. I hope other people like it better than I do. <laughs> that means it'll sell. Because competition is good. And no one really wants to see Harley die or continue to diminish or get worse over time. We want to see Harley turn things around. And both the Pan America could buy with the Sports Dress. They're two pretty good indications that Harley's doing some good work right now. But that's my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you like the Sports Dress? Do you want one? Do you feel more like me where the styling is not for you? Do you hate the sports dress? <laughs> Do you want to see them stick to the Evolution Motor, the standard sporty they've had for the past couple of decades? Let me know down below what you're thinking. I want to end the video here and go get some lunch. Because I'm hungry. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Get out and ride. See you in the next video.